This is a basic overview of allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Some learning objectives. You should know what is an allogeneic hematopoietic stem cell transplant, how and why it is performed, the process, and potential complications. To put it simply, hematopoietic stem cell transplant is replacement of the recipient bone marrow with donor hematopoietic stem cells obtained either from an autologous, which is self, or allogeneic, which is a donor other than oneself. These stem cells can be obtained either from the peripheral blood or bone marrow, or cord blood, in the case of an umbilical cord blood transplant. Firstly, an indication for a transplant must be present. Next, we have to identify a potential donor usually a sibling. If this is not possible, then we have to consider searching for an unrelated donor. Then, typing of the patient and donor for human leukocyte antigens or HLA is done and potential matches are identified and the best donor is selected. A workup on the patient and donor is done. Once the patient is admitted for the transplant, the patient goes through a conditioning phase immediately before the infusion of the hematopoietic stem cells. Immunosuppression is started before and after the infusion and is continued for about 6 months to a year after the bone marrow transplant. An adult transplant is usually done for hematological malignancies, which include acute leukemias, relapsed lymphomas, and sometimes refractory or relapsed myeloma. The common non-malignant diseases for which allogeneic stem cell transplant is done are the bone marrow failure syndromes, for example, aplastic anemia. Allogeneic hematopoietic stem cells can be obtained from a related donor, usually a sibling, or less commonly a haploidentical donor, and this may be the parent of a patient or the child of the patient, or even a sibling with a half match HLA. An unrelated donor is usually an adult, or in the case of a cord blood transplant, where the source is cord blood. For HLA matching, we are looking for donor cells which are histocompatible with that of the recipient at HLA-A, HLA-B, HLA-DRB1, and HLA-C loci. The patient is then evaluated by the transplant physician together with the primary physician for suitability to proceed with the transplant. Screening of the recipient or the patient is done to evaluate their organ function and family support for and after the transplant. Donor screening is done to make sure that it's safe for the donor to undergo the procedure of stem cell harvesting and whether it is safe for the recipient to receive the cell product from that particular donor. Before the infusion of the stem cells, the patient will undergo a conditioning phase. This involves the administration of chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and or immunotherapy in varying combinations. The purpose of this is to eradicate residual disease, for example, leukemic cells, and suppression of host immune system so that it can accept the graft and the creation of space for donor cells in the recipient's bone marrow. The conditioning regimens used can be broadly divided into a myeloablative conditioning, a reduced intensity conditioning, or non-myeloablative conditioning. Myeloablative conditioning involves dose-intensive chemotherapy with or without total body irradiation, and the goal is to eradicate disease in addition to suppressing the recipient immune system to prevent graft rejection. A reduced intensity or non-myeloablative conditioning regimen involves the use of lower doses of chemotherapy and total body irradiation. And the goal of this is to reduce the toxicity related to the conditioning chemotherapy itself. These rely mainly on the graft versus tumor effect to fight residual disease. The hematopoietic stem cells are infused into the patient as per other blood products under monitoring. Engraftment, which is when the donor cells start to grow and blood counts recover, depends on the source of the stem cells. 
Immunosuppressive agents are started just before the infusion of stem cells and continued usually for about 6 months to a year or maybe longer depending on the presence of chronic graft versus host disease. Many complications can arise from bone marrow transplant. During infusion, anaphylactic reactions or hemolysis with renal impairment can occur. Infections, which are potentially fatal, can occur when a patient's white cell count drops after immunotherapy or before lymphocyte function recovers. Drug toxicities can occur as well as graft versus host disease. In the long term, chronic graft versus host disease and secondary malignancies are potential complications.